Um, so our next speaker, it's Stan Picar, and he is going to talk to us about the World Spider Trade Database, our WT, w, WSD, a centralized global open repository for curated data on spider traits. Take it away. Right. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So hello, everybody. As, uh, as Sandra said, I'm going to talk about the World Spider Trade Database. Um, with the advent of the open science, there has been a growing um, demand for uh, storing data that we obtain as scientists in a digitalized way. And this resulted in, resulted in a development of several databases, for example, for plants, uh, beetles, and butterflies, which cover a number of traits that has been measured for these organisms. Unfortunately for arachnids, and especially for spiders, there has no such database that has been available. And all the trade data are actually only available in the thousands of publications. That means they are scattered across the globe in the different journals. So back in 2019 at the International Congress of Arachnology held in uh, New Zealand in Christchurch, there has been a workshop with the aim to develop or to establish a database that could, would uh, pro provide a space for spider trades. And at the workshop, there has been a team established, which is composed of about 10 people uh, coming from across the globe with the aim to actually come to a specific database. So our aim was to actually build a centralized database that would be available online that would archive spider trades on a global scale. Uh, the database should be able to accommodate a great variety of traits, which could be measured in a different individuals, that means at an individual level, or even at a species level, or higher taxonomic levels, such as family level, for example. Then, in order to be uh, general enough, uh, the traits should be accompanied by records and with some extensive metadata. Uh, this includes information, of, for example, on the location, habitat, uh, geographical position, the method, how the trade has been measured, even treatment, and of course, references, that means where it has been published. And finally, we aim to uh, make an open access uh, database, which is following the FAIR principles. So how did we do that? Um, basically, the structure is as follows. Uh, there is a main table, which you can see in the middle, uh, which contains the original name. That means the name under which the, uh, the trade of, of a specific species has been published. Then there is some trade information. And then, for example, value or the measure and sex, life stage, et cetera, et cetera. Then for each trait, we have a detailed characteristic. That means it comes to a specific category, such as anatomy, for example, or life history or reproduction. And of course, a description of a specific trait. And this also is accompanied by the unit or by the reference. Then there are several metadata tables, namely four tables. Uh, first of all, there is a taxonomic table uh, that includes information on higher taxonomic levels, such as family or genus, if the trait is measured on a species level, or a population if it's measured on the individual level. Then there is a metadata table which contains information about the methods. That means how the trade has been measured and uh, geographic information, which is, which is under the location information such as latitude, longitude, altitude, or country. And finally, uh, last metadata table is the references. That means the detailed reference where the trade comes from. Uh, the database itself is actually uh, not alone, but it's connected to the World Spider Catalog and it's synchronized. So that means that the, every change in a, in a spider nomenclature is reflected in the whole database. That means that if we, when we uh, include the data for species, which name will be changed in future, this name will be changed automatically as the World Spider Catalog accepts the new name. Uh, the database is hosted and supported by the Masaryk University. So by the IT support, it has the IT support. It means that actually the whole database is stored at two different servers in case that one would fail. And of course, all the data are created by the core team. This means that when anybody is contributing any data, the core team members, the editors and uh, 
the editor is actually checking the quality of the data. And again, if the, anybody is wanting to use the data, that means the, uh, the data are provided to users by the core team. So this is the database. Uh, the database already exists. It's available at this address, which you see in below. This is the front page of the database, which summarizes the current content. And for example, you see the current content of several characteristics down here. So uh, what do, does it include? Well, uh, as concerned the trades, currently there are 138 trades defined and includes already some data. Of course, the number of trades can be increased into infinity, and we expect that this will reach several thousands. At present, there are 70 data sets, which has been contributed by the about 40 arachnologists, which is not too many, and we hope to get more, many more. But yet, this already accounts to more than 200,000 records. And these records belong to more than 7,500 taxa. The taxa means that some of the records are uh, related to species, others to individuals or families. The database has actually two different options to store the data. That means some data are completely open access, others are restricted. These are usually data which has not been published yet and therefore are partially restricted. So ap approximately more than 30% of the records are freely accessible to anybody. So what's the coverage? If you look at the trade coverage, uh, the coverage is, is displaced in this figure. It's a matrix of the taxa on the, on the ordinate and the trade on the abscissa. You see that the coverage is, or uh, it's quite incomplete. This is, this is uh, very common for every database. That means there are some traits which are quite common or represented for many species. Others are very rare. So to summarize some of them, for example, uh, for body size data, these are available for more than 2000 species. Then light and moisture preferences are available almost for 2,000 species. Guild classification is available for more than 1,000 species. And conservation status is also available for more than 1,500 species. So these are basically the best covered traits. If you look at the coverage from the taxonomical point of view, in terms of families, which are on the abscissa, you can see that basically we have almost all families except for two ones, and this is the Euctanizidae and Penestomidae, which so far have no records. Um, the records, however, vary greatly bit, uh, among the families. You see that some of have very high number of records, others are underrepresented. So generally, Gnaphosids or Lycosids, Salticids, Sicarids, and Pteridids, each of these families is represented for more than 40% of these 138 traits. So these are the best represented families. If you look at the geographic coverage, there are, on this map, you can see the, the red and blue points. Uh, basically, these are either centroid for specific countries or exact records. What you can see here is that most of the records come from Europe, of course, which is not surprising. And there are quite few records, quite a few actually come from Southern America, while North America, and Asia is highly underrepresented. So altogether, basically, 66% of the records concern only European species. Uh, recently, we have also, together with Pedro Cardoso, we have made an uh, Arachno tool, which is an air package, which can be used to access the data from the World Spider Trade database, and not only from this database, but also from the World Spider catalog, that means to check the names of the uh, or the nomenclature of uh, that is uh, in this catalog. And also this tool can be used to obtain uh, data on the distribution of the species. Uh, the, the package is already available online, so we can go to the, to the R, R uh, repository and download it, or you can wait until it's published in the Journal of Arachnology, which should be, I hope, very soon. And so what's the future for the World Spider Trade Database? Well, it's an infinitely growing database. That means it has just started and it should grow basically forever, hopefully. 
our aim is uh, are high. That means we would like to include all published and also unpublished data on spider trace. But of course, this is dependent on the on you. That means on all of you who produce the data. Um, one of the next steps is to develop vocabulary for traits. That means the exact definition for traits. And for this means, we are calling for the experts that would like to join our team and become experts for, for specific group of traits. And of course, in future, once the digitalized, digitalized catalogs of other orders are, are available, we could extend this database to other orders. However, this is really depending on the, on the catalogs, on the new catalogs for the small orders or for scorpions and, and harvestmen. So to finalize, so to what are the take home messages? So first of all, go to see the database. It's online, so we can access it easily to, from the address that I show you. Then once we explore it, uh, please try to donate the data. Uh, we try to follow the principle first give then take so that we can actually accumulate large number of data. And if every, anybody will contribute, then the, the database will just grow. Please remember that the more data there are, the, the higher usage of the, of the data will be. This can be also achieved by using the database as a public data repository. That means you know that many journals nowadays require that your data has to be stored in some place which, are, which is accessible online. Indeed, the database can be used for such a repository because we can provide you with a, with a specific address or even DOI number. And however, to donate the data or to send the data, you have to actually prepare them for a specific template. This is an Excel spreadsheet that has to be filled in. And it's a, it's a very intuitive. That means it's easy to be it's filled in, but it takes some time, of course, to prepare the data. So we actually, we actually want to advise that you could use this spreadsheet to store your data on your computer. And then whenever it's available, you can send it to the database and then made it available to others. So I would like to thank you for your attention. Um, here is the list of, of authors of the paper that has contributed to the data. And uh, currently, the, the paper is under consideration in the database journal. So this is all for me. Thank you. Well, thank you so very much. I know, I don't know if you read in the comments, but everyone seems to be very, very excited and willing to contribute. So there was one question. So to scroll back, just give me a second. So the question is, uh, it's from Peter, apart from WSC, are you linking to other resources or databases or vocabularies? Uh, not yet. This is this has to be developed. This is well, I mean I was presenting the first step. That means we start with something, some backbone. But now, as I said, we want to build a completely new vocabulary and start something new. So we, as I would like to repeat, that we are looking for experts who would like to join for specific groups of traits. So if you are, if you decide to help us, just send me an email, and I'll be happy to help you to actually put you in our group. So uh, Dark is asking, as part of your data sets, are you including morphological matrix used for phylogenetic reconstruction? Yes, this can be, of course, included because the, I mean, uh, the database is open to many different traits, whatever it is, morphology or whatever. So of course, then this can be downloaded and used for phylogenetic reconstruction. Are you currently, currently including it? I, I think uh, that was the question, if whether you are including it right now. I mean, there are, there are some morphological data, but not many, actually. Most of the morphological data are data on body size. There are very few data on the, for, let's say, for example, the shape of uh, sexual organs, either in males or females, but there are already some. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you so much, Stano. Okay, thanks. You're welcome.